So one of the last things that I want to emphasize uh, with learning about SSH and putting this stuff into practice, let's go back to our topology here. All right, I'll log back in where I had my external side here. So we've, we've been messing around with really just here with these internal devices. I've had internal devices and they've been communicating back and forth to each other. And, you know, this has been good to learn about the intricacies of setting up an SSH server and how you, how you can do different, uh, different critical things. Um, but what we haven't done is, well, what if I wanted some of this to start going externally? All right. What if I wanted to do this not from my internal side of my network, but what if I want to kind of go external and do some of this stuff externally? All right. Well, now we have to start paying attention to what's what's uh, what's the deal with our router. Do we have anything on our router that would allow us to start interacting with this externally? So let's take a quick look at our router and we'll start asking some of the same questions, but also combine this from a routing perspective. So you can see here I left off by actually running the, the list all zone equals external command. I checked my firewall to be able to see, right, I forward in the HTTP traffic. You'll also notice it says services. So services currently says SSH. So I've got a port forward that says traffic that comes in on port 80, forward it to somewhere else. But I do have an SSH service that's currently allowed. Well, what, what does that mean? This is a really critical thing a lot of new people screw up. What does it mean to have a service that's being allowed as opposed to having a port forward? It's like, well, realize your SSH, or excuse me, your CentOS computer, a CentOS router, has an SSH server that's already installed and it's already running, right? You can check it. Do a system CTL status, we said SSH. Like, that might not be found. If it's not SSH, try SSHD. SSHD, and you'll see, hey, this, this does have an SSH server as well. Oh, okay. And so if we went and did something like an LS of slash etc slash SSH, it's like, hey, there's a lot of those same files. I've got an SSHD underscore config. I've got those ECDSA keys. It's like, oh, oh boy, if we all have copied computers, that means all these keys, they're all copies of each other as well, and they're not going to be secure. Okay, so paying attention to what keys you have on which computers, like that's going to be really critical. You might ask the question like, is, is, is public key authentication been set up? Right? If, if I do like an ls-a to see hidden files, it's like, oh, no, I don't have a .ssh folder. I don't have a .ssh folder. I don't have that authorized keys. That's not something that I currently have added to this computer. It's like, oh, okay. Well, I do have an SSH server that's running, and apparently my firewall has something to do with SSH. But, you know, anyways, I'm, I'm just noticing some of the information that's already there that we've been looking at here on, a, on the Ubuntu computer in detail. Um, okay, so how, how does this work from a, from, a, from a routing perspective and from the services perspective, from a firewall perspective? So here's a really critical thing to understand, that when you look at your firewall zones, looking down the services category as opposed to the, for, port, for, the forward port category, these are two different ideas. This is two completely separate different ideas. So maybe we'll look at the graphic to help us uh, understand this. So when you set up a router, when you set up a firewall to allow a service, what that means is that someone could connect to your computer using that service. All right. So in other words, if I'm on the external Kali machine, which I am right now, if I tried to connect to the external router side by SSH, what that means is that SSH is currently a service that is allowed. Okay, let, let's try it, right? What's the IP address of my external side? It's 172.20.8.1. So that means here on this Kali side, if I tried popping open a terminal, and I try logging in, if I try SSH to sandbox at 172.20.8.1, it's going to say, hey, there's a server here. Do you want to trust it? Yes, I want to trust it. Okay, what's the password? Here's the password, and now I'm logged into the router. Right? I do my IPA and confirm. It's like, hey, look, there, there's the IP address for the router. I am currently logged into the router from the Kali machine using a secure connection. And notice the path that this took. This went down the external side, which means the router is allowing people from the external side to SSH to them. Do you want that or not? It's like maybe you do. Maybe I want people to be able to externally connect and troubleshoot my router. What if I lock it down? It's like, well, if I lock it down, then that means someone could not SSH to my router externally because maybe that's a contested side. Maybe I want to allow people to log into the router, but you have to be on the internal side in order to do it. Oh, so paying attention to do I want to allow connections going from both directions? These are things you can control with your firewall. 
So maybe we'll take a quick look at, at how we might be able to do this. So I'll, I'll type exit here. I'll, I'll quit the connection that I had open to the router. And let's jump back over to the router and see what we could do about this. So let's explore the router firewall connections a little bit more here by doing something like this. I'll do a sudo firewall dash cmd dash dash list all. And then we'll do a, this time we'll do a zone equals internal. All right, we'll check the internal zone. And we'll confirm our password and we'll be able to see it's like, oh, on the internal side, this was the ETH1 side, we're currently allowing a certain amount of services and SSH is one of them. So SSH is being allowed if you try to connect from the inside. And when we did the zone equals external, that proved to us that, well, SSH is actually being allowed from both directions. So the port forwarding only happens when you hit the outside. But from an SSH perspective, you actually allow SSH connections coming from either direction. Okay. Well, is this good? Is this bad? Is this what you want? M maybe it is. Maybe it's not. So let's see how we could change this. Maybe I want to create a secure connection, but if you want to SSH to my router, which is a really critical device, I don't want you to be able to do that from the rest of the internet. I don't want you to be able to do that from the external side. So maybe this zone equals external side where I've got that SSH server, uh, the, that SSH service added. Maybe I don't want that. It's like, well, there's a command that you could remove that. I could do something like this. I could do a sudo firewall dash cmd. I could say dash dash zone equals external. I'm making a change on the external zone. I want it to be a permanent change. Dash dash permanent. And then from here, I could have something like a dash dash remove dash service equals. And then I could have something like, well, SSH, right? It's a named service that's very, very common. Lots of people know about this. So let's try that. All right. And if I try running that command, it says success. Now, because I did the dash permanent, I'll have to do a reload, right? Sudo firewall dash CMD dash dash zone. Uh, let's do a list all, right? List dash all space and then dash dash zone equals external. Um, oops, I, I wanted to do a reload. I'm kind of typing too many things here at once. Reload. Now we'll check that zone equals external. Here we go. Zone equals external. Let's list it. And we'll see now that now we've removed the service. The service is no longer added to the list of things that you can connect to on the remote side. So let, let's verify it. Let's try it. All right. So I was I just connected a moment ago from the external side to the uh, to the router. And now if I try SSHing to it, it says, nope, no host. So I have an SSH server. It's running, but the firewall is now blocking it. The firewall says if you're on the external side, no, you cannot remotely connect to me. Okay, well, what if I try connecting from the internal side? So this is the internal Kali computer that's been connecting to our internal Ubuntu side. What if that tries connecting? All right, what if this tries connecting on the internal side? SSH2, sandbox, at, and then now I do 192.168.8.1, right? I tried connecting to my gateway there, the 8.1 device. It's like, hey, we've never seen this server before. Let's go ahead and connect to it. Yes. Okay. What's the password? Type out the password, a password, and things work. So that remember, that's a big reason why you have these internal devices is what if you need to connect to your other stuff, try connecting from the outside, try connecting from the inside and seeing what happens. They're very, very useful for testing, even though they're not something that's actually going to score you points directly. They'll help you troubleshoot stuff that's happening. Okay. And I can exit that connection. So that's the difference of what's happening here. Uh, when you look at this from a topology perspective, configuring your router firewall, you know, that, that's critical from a security perspective. Routers are critical when it comes to security, and a lot of that happens at the firewall level. Okay, so maybe you like that, maybe you don't, right? I'm just giving some examples of things that you might want to do. How about I add it back in? All right, so what if I say, well, I do want to be able to remotely troubleshoot my router. Maybe, maybe I want to be able to do that. Okay, fine. So I could hit a couple up arrows here, and effectively where I had the remove service... SSH, it's like, well, change the word remove to add. All right, so firewall dash CMD dash dash zone equals external dash dash permanent dash dash add dash service equals SSH. Okay, fine. And now I can do my reload. I'll do a dash dash reload command to reload my firewall. And now I'll check my, my zone here, zone equals external and see, hey, I've added the SSH service back in. All right. So understanding that's what services are. Those are the list of things that allow you to connect directly to the router. But that's not the same as a port forward, right? The port forward says, I'm going to take that request and send it on somewhere else. I'll send it on to another computer. Okay. So what, what would be an example of that? It's like, well, here, here, let's try an example of this. It's like, what if on the Kali external side, I want to be able to SSH, but I don't want to SSH to the router. I want to be able to SSH directly internal to this internal web uh, server that we've set up. And now, of course, this has an SSH server running as well. 
So I could try SSHing in, but this time, hey router, I don't want to ever SSH directly to you. I want to, I want you to pass on those requests to something on the internal side. So this is something that you could do as well. You could set up a port forward so that it's not just port forwarding traffic on port 80. We could also port forward traffic on, uh, on, uh, on something like port 22. Right, so let's let's go ahead and try doing that. All right, and if we check from our history, remember we had one of the very first commands we had was this add forward port port equals eighty proto equals TCP. Like yeah, that command. Right, command number seven for me. That that's a very very useful command. Maybe I'll hit a bunch of up arrows so I don't have to retype all of it. It's like hey, there it is. This was a useful command that we used to be able to add a port forward for port eighty traffic to go to port eighty on the internal side. It's like well, this time I don't want to do port eighty traffic. I want to do port twenty two. Right, that's that's where SSH happens. So I'll change the 80s and this I'll delete those out and I'll change those to port 22 so if any traffic hits port 22 on the router on the external side let's forward it to that internal server also on port 22 yeah sure I'll try that I'll run that command and because I had a dash dash permanent I'll have to do a reload right I'll do a reload command again dash dash reload and then I'll check my external zone right I'll do a zone list all zone equals external let's look at the zone and see ah no now I've got two port forwards I've got a port forward for port 80, and I've got a port forward for port 22. Both of them sending port 80 and port 22 traffic to the same server, to that same internal side. And now we've got to ask ourselves a question. Right now I'm allowing SSH connections to the computer. If SSH hits on the external side, I said I'm going to allow that. But I'm actually forwarding it. So which is going to happen? If I try from the external side, if I try SSHing to the router, is it going to log me into the router? Or is it because I have this port forward, is it going to forward me on and log in here? It's not going to be both. It's going to be one or the other, right? Let's give it a try. Let's see which one it does. So if I now try logging in something like SSH of sandbox at, and now do the external side, that 172.20.8.1, all right, if I try logging in as this, it says, hey, uh, remote, remote key verification failed. Wait, why did it do that? It said, hey, you've connected to this address before, but the keys aren't the same. So we just connected a moment ago, and of course, that gave us the key for the router. But now, as you can see, we're forwarding that traffic. So the, the login request did not go to the router. The router forwarded it onto our internal server. So again, we have that mismatch with our known host file. So maybe I'll remove that, All right? I'll remove my .ssh slash known host. I'll delete that file. Okay, that one's gone. And now I'll try hitting a couple up arrows and I'll log back in. I'll log in as sandbox at 172.20.8.1. It's gonna say, hey, I've never seen this server before because we're now hitting the internal Ubuntu side. Yes, let's type the password of password. And it's like, hey, now I'm logged into my Ubuntu computer. I'm no longer logged into the router. I was now logged into the Ubuntu, right? There's those private keys I was looking at before. The whole Kali was here that I created on the internal side. So it is possible using a router, using your firewall, you could take requests and simply deny them. I'm going to remove the port. I'm going to say this is not something, this is not traffic I'm going to allow through. I could add the service, which allows you to connect to the router itself. Or I could forward the, the request, which will take it, pass it through the router and pass it to some internal device. Which one do you want? Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a big what if. What is the situation you find yourself in? Uh, how do you want to configure your router to be able to allow it? So big difference between adding it as a forward as opposed to adding it as a service. All right, so kind of here, having it as a service, it's a bit redundant. It, it's not something that actually triggers. It's going to trigger our port forward here instead. So paying attention to your port forwards is definitely going to be it's going to be a really, really critical thing as we do a lot of our routing. So, great information to learn from an SSH perspective, all the way from getting your SSH server up and running, and then thinking about it from a topologies perspective. What if I wanted to route SSH traffic through a router and connect to it on the external side? You know, we got some examples of that. And then finally, you hopefully got to see what's the difference between having a port forward as opposed to a service that's allowed to allow you to connect to the device directly. Okay, big difference there, if, uh, depending on which way you want to go and connect to things. Okay. Okay, so we'll continue on in future videos to see more things about other services. We'll continue making our services a little bit more complex and hopefully get more practice with our router, routing things through to connect to them from the external side as opposed to connecting them from the internal side. Okay, great stuff.